Okay, so don't mind the kind of jank camera angle for the image disc screen, but I finally got two cameras set up, and one of them is a old VHS C camcorder that was used to take my own baby videos. So anyway. <laughs> So, we're going to go ahead and press A to start the alignment test. We already have our alignment disc in there, so... Wait for it to start. Oh, uh -huh. Okay, there we go. Alright, so, what's happening here is that this disc is formatted with nine sectors per side, per track. And those 18s that's scrolling by means that it's detecting all 18 sectors across both sides of the disk. Right now, we have a single, or we have single stepping on, which for this drive, since it's a 720K, five and a quarter inch drive, I'm gonna stop the beeping so that then I can actually think. Single stepping in this case with this drive, this is a 720K drive, despite being 5.25 inches, and it isn't particularly used as often as other common formats for the five and a quarter inch drive, such as 360K and 1.2 meg. But functionally, as far as like head stepping and alignment goes, treat this like a 1.2 meg drive. So what we're gonna want to do here is, I'm gonna have to exit and re-enter alignment. What we're going to have to do here is change single stepping to double stepping using S. And so you can see there that's now double stepping and you can switch between heads using H. And you can just step around by using the arrow keys up and down. And you can see here that this drive is currently aligned. And you can also use the numbers on the keyboard. For example, let's type in 3, and that'll jump to the 30th track. And you can see all this happening as well on the second camera as well, so that's a bonus. Anyway, let's deliberately screw this all up by sticking a screwdriver in while it's still running. Mess it around with the head. Wow, this is actually a little bit hard to misalign. Come on. All right, it is no longer reading from the top head, which means that it is fully misaligned. You can see right there, head zero, which is the bottom head, reads fine, but the top head, it's not reading anything. So in order to align it, I've found that it's usually best to move to around track 20 or tra track 30, just somewhere within that range so that then you can get a good grip on where things are. And for doing the actual alignment of the head, make sure you do not apply pressure to the top of the head right there, or else it will possibly damage your alignment disc or whatever disc you're using to align. You don't have to use a special alignment disc like I am here. Just as long as it's a disc that's formatted, you should be able to use it just fine. So, what I'm basically doing now is just slowly nudging the head from side to side. Oh, I just had it there. Okay. Okay. Alright, that seems good. Let's tighten it a little bit. It's during this time, when you should try and maybe hold the head in place a little bit while you tighten or else the torque action of the screws themselves might end up screwing everything up again, so. Also, make sure you don't actually touch the disc itself, so that's another thing to note. I know that it might be a little bit hard to see from this angle as well, so I apologize for that, but anyway, let's move it around. Okay, so that is still misaligned there, so. We gotta loosen the screws again. Just leave them a little bit tightened. And now just 
nudge the head from side to side, and that seems to be good already. And the screws a bit again. Oh no. See what I mean? <laughs> Tightening that screw threw it off again. Even though this is very old technology, you still gotta be pretty precise about things. So I'm just gonna try and nudge it a little bit further over to the side that set, then we can have some more wiggle room. Okay, that seems to be good. Ah! <laughs> You have to have a lot of patience to get this right, but eventually it works, so. I'm just lifting the head off the disc entirely, temporarily. Okay. Now let's step all the way back down. Ooh, that is very out of alignment there. Okay. Again, move back up to 30. Now that's out of alignment. <laughs> you just gotta go back and forth until you find that sweet spot. Okay, I think I moved a little bit too far that way now. Yeah, that seems to be better. Let's move it all the way back down to the beginning again now, see how that goes. Okay, so that seems to be good so far. Let's just step around in single, well, double steps. So we're just stepping up and down by single tracks on this disc, which we're aligning a high density drive with the low density disc, so keep in mind that you will have to use a matching disc with a matching drive if you want extra precision, but since this 720k drive is currently more or less configured just to read lower density discs, it doesn't matter as much, but it's it's just not a good idea to use mismatched alignment discs and stuff, but as far as reading low density discs goes, it looks like this should work fine now, considering how seems to be more or less completely aligned. So, yeah, let's just switch around the heads. So now we're reading from the bottom head again, and you can see that it's still reading just fine. And occasionally image disc will just like skip a single sector or two when switching heads. Don't worry about it, as long as the beats are constant then you should be fine. Oh, okay, seems like something is throwing it off a little bit, so we're gonna have to go back to the drive again. Oh wait, this is head zero that I was doing that. That's strange. And track 40 is unformatted, so I'm stepping back to 39. Okay, so it seems like we are fully aligned right now for 360k discs. So, we'll just stop that for now, and we will cut to the next section of the video where we will be looking at aligning the actual stepper that moves the heads forward and backwards. So, yeah, see you in a bit. All right, and here's our next part of the video. I left my screwdriver on my desk. So the next part of the video is first unaligning and then realigning this motor here. This controls the heads that you can see just peeking through in the back there and how they move back and forth. So what we're gonna do is once again, we'll tap A to start an alignment test. Wait for it to start beeping. Okay, so this time we don't have to change between head one and head zero because instead what we're gonna be messing up is the alignment of the heads as a whole. 
So we're gonna loosen these screws here. And you can hear already, it's completely messed up because now the motor's loose. Look at that. We can just move the motor around. Okay, so let's tighten the screws to a, a reasonable amount so that then the motor doesn't literally flop around like it was earlier. And so what we want to do now is just slowly rotate the motor for a bit. I may have tightened that screw too tight. And yeah, already we've already got it again. So let's just hold it in place, move to a different part of the motor or disc. And that is clearly not aligned anymore again. Also, side note, you can see that this is a belt-driven drive, so maintain your belts. These belts are very high quality and have lasted a long time, so for other drives, though, you might want to watch out. So yeah, just keep on turning. Oh wait, I'm, I'm single-stepping. I forgot about that. Oops. Let me change to double-stepping. Okay, let's move back up. Okay, now we should hopefully be getting actual alignment again. It is a little bit hard to do though. Let's just move all the way back first so then we can get a baseline alignment. Okay, we've got something there. Let's just tighten one of the screws further, just to hold it in place. Let's move up. Okay, that's aligned. Make sure that the other head is still aligned. It is. Yep. Let's step up to three. Okay, that's still aligned. Let's step up and down a little bit. Okay, and it seems like we've already aligned the head assembly in its entirety, so let's just re-tighten these screws. Normally manufacturers will put a little dab of glue over screws like this and the ones on the other side just to make sure that they never stop being aligned in the first place, but I kind of broke away the glue on this drive, so yeah, anyway, it's fully aligned now. We can stop that. And just as one final thing before we end up this video, I will show you DOS booting off of the floppy disk. I have it formatted as a 720k disk, but because I only aligned the drive using a 360k alignment disk, this disk will not be able to be read by any other drive. But without further ado, now that the disk is inserted, let's just press enter and watch the heads turn. Well, the head move, not turn. And there we go, DOS is now booted. We just have our flop disc right here. Let's just zoom out, and yeah, that's the video. Thanks for watching.